Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmalasya Yata Yato Nivyad Itaratas Charte Swavigya Swaran Tene Brahma Hirdaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yatsurayaha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisargo Mesha Damna Swena Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Di Mahi O oh my Lord, Sri Krishna's son of Vasudeva. O oh, all pervading personality Godhead. Oh, for my respectful base, it is unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primal cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations, of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes, appear factual, although they are unreal. Therefore, I meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravotra paramo nirmatsaranam satam vedyam vastava matra vastu shivadam tapatra yonmulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kim Vapurir Ishwaraha Sajohidi Avarudyate Tra Krite Vihisusubistakshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold mysteries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam pipata Bhagavatam rasam alayam Mahur Ahuraska Bhuvibhavakaha. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sisugadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. 
including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hiriantaksto Abhadrani Vidunati Shrihit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, is itself righteous uh, activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, or Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. Nasta preesu bhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas Tamo Bhavo Kamaloba Dayas Chaye Chete Taranavidam by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. Modes of passion. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam <clears throat> prasana manaso. Bhagavat Bhakti Yogataha Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangasya Jayate When these pure impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate Hridaya Grantis Chidyante Sarvasam Saya Shiyante Chascha Karmani Mukta Sang Drista Evatmana Drista Evatmana Ishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga suffers the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come to this at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Verse 42. Yata gavo nasi protas Tantyam vadas chadama bi Vak tantyam nama bir bada Vahanti balim istitu Translation purported by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. As a cow bound through the nose by a long rope is conditioned, so also human beings are bound by different Vedic conjunctions and are conditioned to obey the orders of the Lord. Purport by, by Srila Prabhupada. Every living being, whether a man or an animal, or bird thinks that he is free by himself, but actually 
no one is free from the severe laws of the Lord. The laws of the Lord are severe because they cannot be disobeyed in any circumstance. The man-made laws may be evaded by cunning outlaws. But in the codes of the supreme lawmaker, there is not the slightest possibility of neglecting the laws. A slight change in the course of God-made law can bring about a massive danger to be faced by the lawbreaker. Such laws of the supreme are generally known as the codes of religion under different conditions. But the principle of religion everywhere is one and the same, namely obey the orders of the supreme God, the codes of religion. That is the condition of material existence. All living beings in material world have taken up the risk of conditioned life by their own selection and are thus entrapped by the laws of material nature. The only way to get out of the entanglement is to agree to obey the supreme. But instead of becoming free from the clutches of maya or illusion, foolish human beings become bound up by different nomenclatures. Being designated as brahmanas, chatras, vaisas, sudras, hindus, mohammedans, indians, europeans, americans, chinese, and many others, and thus they carry out the orders of the Supreme Lord under the influence of the respective scriptural legislative injunctions. The statutory laws of the state are imperfect imitation replicas of religious or codes. The secular state or godless state, allows the citizens to break the laws of God, but restricts them from disobeying the laws of the state. The result is that the people in general suffer more by breaking laws of God than by obeying the imperfect laws made by men. Every man is imperfect by constitution under conditions of material existence, and there is not the least possibility that even the most materially advanced man can enact perfect legislation. On the other hand, there is no such imperfections in the law of God, laws of God. If leaders are educated to the laws of God, there is no necessity of a makeshift legislative council of aimless men. There is necessity of change in the makeshift laws of man but there is no change in the God-made laws because they are made perfect by the all-perfect personality of Godhead. The codes of religion, scriptural injunctions, are made by liberated representatives of God in consideration of different conditions of living and by carrying out the orders of the Lord. The conditioned living beings gradually become free from the clutches of material existence. The factual position of a living being is, however, that he is the eternal servitor of the Supreme Lord. In his liberated state, he renders service to the Lord in transcendental love and thus enjoys a life of full freedom, even sometimes on an equal level with the Lord or sometimes more than the Lord. But in the conditioned material world, every living being, wants to be lord of other living beings. And thus, by the illusion of maya, this mentality of lording it over becomes a cause of further extension of conditional life. So, in the material world, the living being is still more conditioned until he surrenders unto the Lord by reviving his original state of eternal servitorship. That is the last instruction of Bhagavad Gita and all the recognized scriptures of the world. Srila Prabhupada Patita Bhavani Ki So there are so many important points in this purport. This is one of those monumental purports that summarizes the predicament of people in this world and also summarizes the solution to all their problems. The problem is 
Are we willing to accept it? <laughs> That's the issue here. And of course, we have that uh, latitude to uh, accept or reject. But by rejecting, we only have trouble. And by accepting, we only have increasing levels of freedom and happiness and transcendental love for Krishna. <clears throat> so the first major obstacle, let's say we've been conditioned for many hundreds and millions of births and deaths. So the first major obstacle is the illusion that we are free. Prabhupada says no one is free from the severe laws of the Lord. So what are those laws? Well, they're summarized by Srila Prabhupada and the Vaishnava Acharyas. No meat eating, no gambling, no intoxication, and no illicit sex. So that seems to be pretty simple. Right? And it is. Only, only great, uh, let's say, Acharyas are able to, uh, let's say, boil down the milk to the most uh, condensed part, you know. So they boiled it down to these four pillars of illicit activities that, or sinful activities that bind people hopelessly to the uh, entanglement of birth and death. Meat eating, gambling, intoxication, and illicit sex. So the laws of Krishna forbid these four things and then encourage four things. Regularly chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra at least 16 rounds. Associating with devotees favorably. Regularly hearing the scriptures. And engaging in Harinam Sankirtan. So if we do, if we avoid these four sinful things and do these four recommended things, then life is happy, problems go away, and we learn the art of using everything material in the service of Krishna. We don't reject anything that may be useful in Krishna's service. So the laws of Krishna, if they're broken, it's very severe. They are very severe. There's no escaping the consequences. One, uh, let's say, consequence is that, like for example, if one takes initiation, and breaks the vows of initiation, which are no meat eating, no gambling, no intoxication, no illicit sex, and regularly chanting Hare Krishna, and regularly hearing Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, regularly associating with devotees and engaging in deity worship, if possible, or Harinam Sankirtan. And so if we violate those rules after initiation, what happens? Well, number one, the spiritual master suffers because he has taken a vow to help the disciple go back to Godhead and the disciple can't go back to Godhead if they, if they engage in sinful activities. So the spiritual master uh, will suffer for the, the sins of the uh, disciple. And number two, the disciple becomes uh, in other words, entangled again in material anxiety and fear and uh, worry and so forth. So, why go there? The law, because it says here, the laws of the Lord are severe because they cannot be disobeyed in any circumstance. The man made laws may be evaded by cunning outlaws. But in the codes of the Supreme Lawmaker, there is not the slightest possibility of neglecting the laws. A slight change in the course of God-made law can bring about a massive danger to be faced by the lawbreaker. Why risk that? That's the point. In other words, we can escape for a certain amount of time the laws of uh, society because they're 
man-made laws and they're imperfect, but we cannot escape the laws of Krishna. We cannot escape the scrutiny of Krishna. Krishna is in our heart and Krishna's agents, the demigods, are omnipresent everywhere. So it's impossible to not be seen, not be understood, uh, engaging in illicit activities. So such laws of the Supreme are generally known as the codes of religion under different conditions, but the principle of religion everywhere is one and the same, namely obey the orders of the Supreme God, the codes of religion. So we see, even in the Bible, when the ancient uh, Jews did not obey the codes of God and uh, became addicted to sinful activities, they suffered tremendously for that. They lost their kingdom. They lost their uh, homeland, in a sense. And it lasted 2,000 years. See? So the, uh, the disobedience, disobedience to God's laws very has very, has very severe consequences. So Prabhupada says, that is the condition of material existence. In other words, we must obey the orders of God and the codes of religion. So, and Prabhupada says, all living beings in the material world have taken up the risk of conditioned life by their own selection and are thus entrapped by the laws of material nature. So, why take that risk when Krishna over and over again is begging the devotee, don't do this. Just always think of me Become my devotee, worship me, offer your homage and respect to me. If you do this, I promise you that you will come back to me. So he's promising that he'll protect the devotee and in all circumstances, you just have to give up sinful activities. <clears throat> so the only way to get out of the entanglement of the laws of material nature is to agree to obey the Supreme Lord. But instead of becoming free from the clutches of maya or illusion, foolish human beings become bound up by different nomenclatures. That means false identifications with the body in terms of ethnicity, race, and all those type of uh, basically horrible things. So what happens? They get tied up with this nomenclature, these names, these, these temporary false names. American, Indian, uh, black, white, uh, uh, you know, and so forth. All these identities. I belong to this family, and uh, I am a, a scholar, or I am a Brahmana, or I am a Chhatri, or whatever. These, these, these are temporary, uh, and because of that, false identifications. Lord Chaitanya said uh, that I'm not a Brahmana, I'm not a Chaitanya, I'm not a Vaisa, I'm not a Sudra. Uh, I am, what am I? I'm the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of the gopis who are the servants of Krishna. Gopi Bhartra, uh, Kamalam Dasa Dasa, Dasanu uh, Das. So, the servant of the servant, many times over, of the servant of the do gopis. So then uh, these nomenclatures designated as Brahmanas, Chachas, Vaisas, Sudras, Hindus, Mohammedans, Indians, Europeans, Americans, Chinese, and many others. And thus they carry out the orders of the Supreme Lord under the influence of respective scriptural le legislative injunctions. So therefore the Varnasram system is supposed to help us gradually rise above these uh, what we call upadis, false identifications, and rise above the influence of the modes of material nature and so forth. The statutory laws of the state are imperfect imitation replicas of religious codes. That's a fact. The Constitution of the United States is a flawed document. It's not based directly on the Bible. It's based on the speculations of uh, so-called Bible scholars. So therefore, it's, it's, it's uh, distanced from
from the Bible. It's not pure Bible. It's pure speculation. And the secular state or the godless state allows the citizens to break the laws of, the, of God but restricts them from disobeying the laws of the state. The result is that the people in general suffer more by breaking the laws of God than by obeying the imperfect laws made by men. So yeah, they make, they make a law that uh, abortion is legal. They make a law that uh, you can eat. I mean, they, they permit eating meat. They don't, they, they, don't, they don't prohibit it. So both things are wrong. And they make a law that uh, you can, uh, uh, you don't have to worship God. In fact, they discourage worshiping God. You see. So uh, by uh, permitting uh, sinful activities, why don't they outlaw alcohol? Why don't they outlaw ma marijuana? Why don't they outlaw illicit sex? No. They permit all these things. They just put a tax on it, that's all. You know, so if, if, if smoking is, is actually bad for you, but yet they permit it. They just tax it. They're called sin taxes. In other words, they support sinning as long as you pay a tax. So... Therefore, there's chaos in society. The, the result is that the people in general suffer more by breaking the laws of God than by obeying the imperfect laws made by man. Every man is imperfect by constitution under the conditions of material existence, and there is not the least possibility that even the most materially advanced man can enact perfect legisl legislation. On the other hand, there's no such imperfection in the laws of God. If leaders are educated in the laws of God, there's no necessity of a makeshift legislative council of aimless men. <laughs> that's, that's the definition of uh, representative government and democratic governments. There is, a, there is necessity of change in the makeshift laws of man, but there's no change in God-made laws because they are made perfect by the all-perfect personality of God. So this is something we should understand. We don't have to study American history. We don't have to study the Constitution of the United States. All these things are imperfect. What we should study is Srimad Bhagavatam and, and, and the history of the world from the, from the beginning to the uh, Battle of Kurukshetra or, or even after that. that. That's what we should study. That's And it's a perfect document. And we should study what are the rules and regulations of Pancha Trikibiti, worshiping the deity, and rules and regulations uh, for devotees who accept initiation. These are the things we should learn about and study. The codes of religion and scriptural instructions are made by liberated representatives of God in consideration of different conditions of living and by carrying out the orders of the Lord. The conditioned living beings gradually become free from the clutches of material existence. So if you just follow all the laws that are man-made, you get more involved, more entangled in the clutches of material existence. If you follow the laws given by Krishna, dharman to shakshat bhagavat pranitam, you know, only Krishna can, can enact uh, principles of religion, then we become more and more free. But in the conditioned material world, every living being wants to be the lord of other living beings. And thus, by the illusion of maya, this mentality of lording it over becomes a cause of further extension of conditional life. Uh, this uh, illusion of lording it over, or this mentality, of, the illusion of maya is this mentality of lording it over. And that's the, that's the cause of further extension of conditional life. So do we want to be the Lord or do we want to be the servant of the Lord? That is the question. To be or not to be, as, as Shakespeare said, that is the question. But what he means, what he should have meant is to be the Lord or to be the servant of the Lord, that is the question. Right? So if we choose to be the servant of the Lord, then we get freedom. And if we choose to be the Lord, we become more entangled. 
people think, well, if I become president of the United States, I'll have the freedom to do anything I want. Not true. Not true. That, because that's why uh, you have a tripartite government in the United States. It's for checks and balances against the uh, autocratic dominion, uh, domination by the president. The president is not a king. He, he does not have all powers. He has limited powers. Congress has limited powers. The judicial system has limited powers. Everyone is limited because you can't trust everyone. That's the whole point. If you trust someone, you give them freedom because you know they'll make the right decisions. But uh, there's so much example in history, you can't trust anyone. And therefore, they, have, they set up this system of checks and balances. That's imperfect also. So, in the material world, the living being is still more conditioned until he surrenders to the, unto the Lord by reviving his original state of eternal servitorship. That is the last injunction of the Bhagavad Gita and all other recognized scriptures of the world. Yes. So, Islam means surrender to God. And the whole message of the Bible is you must surrender to God. And message of Bhagavad Gita is you should surrender to God. And then the process of surrendering is, is detailed in great, uh, uh, let's say, it's, it's tremendous details in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is a wonderful purport by Srila Prabhupada, and I pray that we may all imbibe these principles that he's explaining here and be very successful in our quest to go back to Godhead. Hare Krishna, Gorsa, Sila, Prabhupada, Kiji. Are there any questions? Speak louder. Well, you have someone like Narada Muni. You can go anywhere. You can go to hell. You can go to Deva planets. He can go back. He can go to uh, the spiritual world. He's not limited in any way. So you could say, in a sense, that he is uh, has more freedom to preach than the Lord. He'll approach people like Magrari, a uh, hunter who half kills animals and then enjoys torturing them to death. What a horrible person. But yet Narada Muni will approach him and try and convert him. Whereas Krishna says, don't waste your time with such people. So he has more freedom because he understands the purpose of the Lord. Therefore, he will take risks, such as approaching a person like Magrari or approaching a person like uh, Valmiki, who was a hunter also, and trying to convince them. So in the case of Magrari, once he became a devotee by the mercy of Narada Muni, he wouldn't even step on an ant. Right? Just see what an amazing transformation. And that's by the mercy of Narada Muni. So he is free to preach everywhere, whereas Krishna limits. Uh, so... We read that verse yesterday, the end of the Bhagavad Gita, near the end, it says, Idam te natapaskaya nabaktaya kadachana nachasra su sove vacham nachamam yo vyasuyati. This conf confidential knowledge may never be explained to those who are not austere or devoted or engaged in devotional service, nor the one who is envious of me. But yet, Narada Muni will try to approach such people to convert them to Krishna consciousness. He's taking a risk, right? Because Krishna says, don't do it. So he has more freedom, in a sense. But he doesn't misuse it. Any other questions? Okay, of course, the Srila Prabhupada Kijay.